we created a computing platform we called the NVIDIA Drive. The NVIDIA Drive is a supercomputer on a chip. A supercomputer on a chip. And it's able to scale to level two, level three, level four, to level five. It is able to understand the type of functionality it can, includes sensor fusion, computer vision, deep learning, high performance computing, in a very small energy efficient package so that it's able to perform all of these different types of applications at the same time. It has to run them all at the same time in a very high performance state so that the car can be as responsive as possible to all of the environment around it. And it has to do so from level two with just maybe front and surround cameras to robot taxis with tens of cameras and lidars and ultrasonics and radars all around the car because downtime is simply intolerable. And so the range of functionality, the range of sensor richness, and as a result, the scale of computation necessary is really daunting in this new world of autonomous vehicles. We've been working on this technology and I want to show you some of the work that our engineers have done. They've made a whole movie for you, and so let's run it. Using deep learning, we're able to recognize the world around us, what are the objects we should avoid? It also recognizes what are spaces that are safe to drive. We have to figure out what is the trajectory of our car using cameras or using LIDARs. The future self-driving car computer has to be able to process sensors of all different types. It has to localize even to a sensor we call the HD map. Localizing allows us to then drive using computational approaches or deep learning approaches. Surround perception in all kinds of different weather conditions, rain, snow, highway, urban. One of the powers of artificial intelligence deep learning is the ability to train one network and it now recognizes the objects around it. Ladies and gentlemen, the NVIDIA Drive. <laughs> Autonomous driving will revolutionize cars, but AI will revolutionize not just driving, but also our user experience. Remember, we now have sensors all around the car. We're gonna have sensors and cameras around the inside of the car. So this car, our future cars, will have contextual awareness of the world around us, and it will have contextual awareness of us. So the question is, what can we do with artificial intelligence, computer vision, augmented reality, and how do we fuse those fundamental technology to change, to revolutionize how we enjoy our car? And we think that in the future, 
not just the inside of the car, not just the outside of the car, the functionality of the car will be revolutionized, but how we enjoy the car and how the car interacts with us will be revolutionized. The amount of software that we have to write, the amount of software that we have to write is really quite boundless. And we've imagined several, we've imagined several applications we could create. And so what we've done is we created a SDK that fuses the sensors of the cameras outside the car, the sensors and the cameras inside the car, and we created a brand new SDK we call the Drive IX, Intelligent Experience. Drive IX is an SDK that software developers all around the world could then create the next generation of user experience. Drive IX, Drive IX includes eye tracking, head pose, estimation, speech synthesis, speech recognition, gesture recognition, facial recognition, fundamental technologies that are then used to create next generation applications. Let me show you some examples. This is, uh, Je this is Janine, Janine, one of our employees. And uh, here's an example where she's coming back from an airport and she's carrying all these different bags and she could be coming out of a shop, out of a store, and the car sees her, recognizes her face and opens the trunk. Of course it should. Your car is an AI, of course it should. There's other things that it could do. It could just, it tracks your eyes. We use artificial intelligence, deep learning, and a very special technique for labeling. We can now track eyes very carefully. And so this way, we know that as we come to a stop, that somebody who's crossing the street has made eye contact with us before we decide to go further. So wherever she looks, we can calculate and estimate what is the angle of her eyes. And remember, we're doing this only from two-dimensional cameras. How do you predict the path that you're looking at, the orientation that you're looking at, just from a video? Here, we're detecting that she's being distracted. So we wrote a small application. Distraction, distraction, distraction. And so if you have a car and the car's driver is required to be in control, distraction. we could create an AI that allows us to remind you that you're distracted. We can create an AI that recognizes that you're sleepy and that, in fact, you should probably have a cup of coffee or pull over. This is Janine pretending like she's sleepy. Attention, attention, wake up. So all of a sudden, this car is no longer just an autopilot, but it's also a co-pilot, a co-pilot that watches after you while you are the pilot in command. And then lastly, remember, this car has perception all around it, surround perception. And so, how many times have you tried to get out of a car and you shouldn't have? Caution, just a moment. All clear. If a car is coming, if a bicycle or a person is coming, the car door simply doesn't open. And so, this car is not only driving for you when it can. When, it, when you're driving, it's also watching out for you. And so, as you can see, the future car is just rich with software. And we need, a, we need a basic computing platform that is able to do the type of processing necessary for the future autonomous machine. And the autonomous machine basically has to do three things. It has to do sensor fusion, sensor processing and sensor fusion. It has to do artificial intelligence and parallel computing. Artificial intelligence and parallel computing. And it needs to be able to then take that information and take action recommend an action. Autonomous machines in the future has these basic capabilities. These basic capabilities is basically a supercomputer on a little tiny chip. Much, much more powerful than any computer that you currently have that you own. And so this new computer requires a new type of processor. And in addition to that, this new computer has to be programmable because there are so many applications we can imagine. Every single week, your engineers are going to create more and more and more applications. You're going to put them onto the store, and you're going to 
download it into your car, and the car gets smarter and smarter and smarter over time. So we believe that the future car is software defined. We believe that we need to have an architecture that can run these type of applications. And we believe that we have to create a computing stack for the industry so it can take advantage of these capabilities. 